the Women's College World Series. So Minnesota is no stranger to tough competition. This is this is a tough opener for OU. No question. And they've faced good pitching. Yeah. I mean, and it's not like they're getting shut out. I mean, they've played tough games against Georgia and Arizona State, putting runs on the board yeah. against solid pitching. So, again, Jordy Ball, if anything, walking into – I, it's not the middle of the season, but getting closer. <laughs> yeah. You know, she is going to be faced, and she will have faced some of the best offensive lineups yeah. in the country. Mm -hmm. Two balls, two strikes. Dow digs back in from the left side of the plate without open stance. Ball looking for a one, two, three, top half of the first. The pitch. Swing and a miss. She pulled the string. Two strikeouts in the top of the first inning to end it without a threat. We head to the bottom of the first inning. Jocelyn Allo in pursuit of 96 will bat second. Scoreless game presented by Down Hotel. Just box as Tiari Jennings leads things off. And the first pitch is in for a strike from Autumn Pease. Saw a quick glance on the TV side of the OU College a Professional and Continuing Study starting lineup. Jennings, Allo, and Johns with Hanson batting cleanup and Taylor Snow up to the five hole. Grace Lyons sixth. Followed by Jada Coleman, seventh, Alyssa Brito, eighth, and Riley Boone, ninth. The 0 1 pitch, little up, but caught that edge. No balls and two strikes, and a good start here, Aaron, for Autumn Pease. Autumn Pease, she's had a lot of experience in the circle. What I love about her is she keeps the ball low, which I think is a good matchup for this team. The 0 2 pitch misses outside. A ball and two strikes. She's got east-west movement, but she keeps the ball at the knees. Again, I, I think for a, for a team that elevates a lot, this is the choice I would go with. No question. And I think as far as Minnesota staff and the way it goes, is the best matchup that mm -hmm. they've got in their pin. Well, two bounces before the plate. But one thing I've I've always liked about Pease, and it's, it's something that's kind of developed, too, as she's gotten gotten older and more experienced she's very deliberate with what she yeah. does she keeps the ball low but she's working east and west but she's also working down one more ball down it's she's very deliberate in where she's in the placement of her pitches Jennings is even the count at 2-2 in a scoreless game pop foul down the right side it'll slice out of play over what used to be the temporary bleachers <laughs> but they're here non-stop otherwise it's a challenge, y'all, I think is the best way to put it. <laughs> Brought to you by the Trails Golf Club. Whoever put Mostly Sunny is trolling us. It is not Mostly Sunny out right now. Uh, overcast, 41 degrees. Though, in their defense, it was Mostly Sunny most of the day. And how about that? Winds out of the southeast at 13 miles an hour. Those flags blowing in. Jennings pops one into the teeth of the wind, racing over to make the catch. Strelo, and there's one away at second base. That's a big out for Minnesota. And that's got to be a win in Pease's eyes. Is that how many times, Plank, have you been on a broadcast and boom, one pitch, one bomb, T.R.A. Jennings sets a tone. Like, that's a huge win. It's happened twice already this yeah. season. Here's our player to watch presented by Noun Hotel in pursuit of history. Jocelyn Allo strides to the plate. She's seen good pitches early in the count. Let's see if she attacks early. First pitch. Little out, ball one. And I feel like that is what we are going to see. Peace is going to be very careful. We were just talking about it on the break. I don't, I don't anticipate to see them standing up giving her no. four. And but she is not going to see anything good unless it's unless it's a missed pitch. Here's the one zero, -oh. up and in, ball two. Well, you've heard me say this a million times, Plank. Both her and Lauren Chamberlain, while they are very much their own player they've forged their own path what they've both done very well is they they can hit bad pitches hard and that's what jocelyn's gonna have to do she's one home run away she's gonna have to hit a bad pitch well here's the 2-0 count ball three they're not even no no three balls and no strikes she jossie made had a great session with the media two weeks ago, made an appearance on the Oklahoma Breakdown with her buddy Gabe Eichert and Teddy Lehman. You don't sense any stress from her. She's oh, no. calm, cool, and collected. Three O's, ball four. Shocker. <laughs> the crowd here, a little bit of a 
A little bit of a boo is there's <laughs> your first look at Kristen Zaleski over at first base, the new Sooner volunteer assistant coach. So then that puts a little bit more of a chip on the shoulder and something to prove for someone like Jana Johns when she sees the, not intentional, but all but intentional. Johns has had a great start to the season at the plate. She's hitting 4-10, nine extra base hits. She's currently second on the team, tied with seven home runs, and she takes the first pitch inside for ball one. Well, Johns was red hot in Palm Springs. I think the game I watched, uh, two home runs, three home yes. runs in yes. one game. Did I have that right? Okay. <laughs> she could have hit a third one. I think she. I think the farthest ball she hit in that game was a foul ball, actually. Unreal. No, <laughs> I'll put it to you this way: if you're right. if you're having that type of a game and you're hitting 410 <laughs> through four weeks of season, like it's beach ball at that point. Yeah, like the it is a beach ball coming at you at home plate. Well, it's like you mentioned the chip on the shoulder. Yeah. I, I want to say it's a little bit of that, but I also feel like she, it, that's just who Jana Johns is. Yeah. When you have throw around her, I'm going to take you yard too. Like it's it's yeah. fine. Yeah. One one's in for a strike, so John's behind now, ball and two strikes. Aaron is referring to the Tennessee game, where Jana Johns went two for four with two runs scored, uh, drove in three runs and hit two bombs. We're probably not playing extra innings if it wasn't for Jana Johns Saturday against Tennessee. Here's the one-two pitch. Up high, two balls, two strikes. I would argue that this entire team has a chip on their mm -hmm. shoulder, though. I mean, if it's not Jana Johns, it's Jada Coleman. If it's not Jada Coleman, it's Kinsey Hansen. It's, you know, insert name, right? Like, th that is how deep the dugout is. That's how deep this roster is. Uh, it, that's a suffocating feeling as a pitcher. This ball's hammered. There's another one of those deep foul balls. Look out in the parking lot. That looked like it was destined for JT's truck. Oh, no. <laughs> not, not that this record comes around many times, DJ, but if you're a pitcher facing somebody who is literally one bomb away, mm -hmm. what's the thought process? Ooh, well, I have good to say, question. I'm glad I was never in that situation, first of all. <laughs> Two twos bounced foul. I'm going to go there. Second of all, I... You, no one wants to be you no one wants to be the pitcher to give up the bomb but you can tell too the way it has gone no one wants to be the team either yeah it's it's an on the pitcher as much as it is yeah we don't want to be the team that does it. exactly you know and I'm I'm a little torn because I would love nothing more than to see Jossie do it here in front of the home crowd so two misses low and then off speed. But we also have a little trip coming up this weekend. That would be so, so, so poetic. poetic. Yes, you took the words right out of my mouth. So, I don't know. I can feel it. It's yeah. Either way, you can't go wrong. Yeah. But. She said the only thing that really mattered to her is that she wanted her dad to be there when she hit 96. As it should be. Absolutely. Yeah. As it should be. Ball four. Well, I know uh, Jocelyn's dad had some great interviews out at Palm Springs with ESPN and got to tell his story and emotional. I had a chance to talk with uh, um, Jen Schroeder, who handled those interviews, and she said, I couldn't help but just cry. You know, hearing Jocelyn Allo's dad talk about the journey to this point, it's a big deal. So this is our moment where he mentioned Jossie's dad, Levi, is an awesome dude. That's why she wears <laughs> number 78. He was a college football player at Lane College. That's where he met his wife, Jossie's mom. The first pitch to Kinsey Hansen is a little out for ball one. So that's what that's what matters in Jossie's mind when we're thinking about 96. But right now, Sooners are thinking about jumping out early. We're scoreless in the bottom of the first inning. After a pop out by Jennings, walks to Allo and Johns, and now a 2-0 count to Kinsey Hansen, who numbers-wise, guys, nice start to the season, 442, four home runs, 11 RBIs. Though, again, I say nice start to the season. That's every hitter in this lineup. So I'll have to come up with a better action. <laughs> well, the list goes on and on. <laughs> and it's kind of one of those things, too. If you are not on, there's someone who's coming off the bench who who is going to be. I mean, and that's, that's what makes this offensive lineup one through nine. They're not one through nine. They're one through about 12 or 13. The, I, I will tell you what you've just described, the gauntlet that yes. is practice, because <laughs> you and I have lived it. Yep. Um, <laughs> the iron is always sharpening the other iron, and that is purposely done 
by this coaching staff. Ground ball, base hit into left field. They'll hold Allo at third. Base is loaded with one out. And here comes Kalen Snow. First hit of the game. I mean, think about this. The hero of the Women's College World Series, Mackenzie Donna, who is coming off the bench. The 2019 Big 12 Newcomer of the Year, Grace Green, is coming off the bench. The captain, Lindsey Elam, is coming off the bench, and they're dying. They're, they're yeah. scratching and clawing to get in this lineup. Here's Taylor Snow with the bases loaded. Swing to the first pitch for strike one. Good one for Peace. You know, and Aaron, you just mentioned this, and having lived it in the circle, part of, I personally believe, part of Jordy Ball's success has oh, also yeah. been every single day she mm -hmm. is facing this lineup, throwing, not BP, throwing in scrimmage, live game yes. feeling. And what confidence you have oh. if you are doing well. And I guarantee there have been times she's been knocked around in this ballpark by yep. her own teammates a oh, little yeah. bit. But you are not going to face a better lineup than what she faces in practice. Mm -hmm. No balls, two strikes. The count after Snow fouls one down the first baseline. Maybe part of the reason why we didn't see an opponent come in this week and scrimmaging against yourself. <laughs> not too shabby for the Sooners. Bases loaded here, one out in the first. The 0-2 pitch to Taylor is outside. Well, and I can tell you, if you if you're listening in, um, you've got you got two women in this booth that have lived it with <laughs> cleats on the dirt. Although Chris Plank, I consider you part of our club. I agree. I appreciate that. Um, the motto is always practice so hard that the game feels easy. Yep. And Snow made that one look easy. She inside outs it foul. That, that is why at times it does look like this team is playing a video game because they just practice their tail off. Every day is a grind. Well, there is no break. Yeah. It is it is high intensity. There is no take a breath drill, yeah, batting go, go, That's go. not how it goes. It is high intensity, so you are prepared not for the physical aspect of the game, but the mental aspect mm -hmm. of the game. Bases loaded, one out. The one-two to Snow. Up and in, almost hit her. Two balls and two strikes. Talon, by the way, who we mentioned at 464 average, but has struggled just a bit recently. Just one for her last nine. She's 0 for her last five, but has scored a couple of runs and walked. I know she wants to get that bat going right here, right now. The 2 2. Well, that little lollipop change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bugs Bunny. The Bugs yeah. Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned the, the recent rough patch for Taylor Snow, although relative to the 464 <laughs> average. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. It's tough when you're hit. She was, so she was above 600 before this Jeez. patch. 3-2. Stays alive. Fouls it back. And keep in mind, these numbers are not like, oh, she's had four at-bats. No, I mean, yes. we've, these are like, you know, I'm just against UCLA. 30-something at-bats. Right. Yeah, Arizona. Yeah, yeah, Arizona. <laughs> A Cal State Fullerton team that was really good that beat Arizona. They've played some time. Utah has nearly beat Oklahoma State. They've had some nice wins. Full count will do it again. The pitch. Line shot off the glove of Steele. Into, well, not quite out to outfield. And Johns is going to get tagged out at the plate trying to score from second. Alo scores easily. It looked for a moment like Strelo, as it bounced off her, might have had a chance to have it ricochet a little further. It just didn't happen. Not far enough for Johns to score, but the Sooners get their first run. Let's watch it again. The ball's hit hard, but you could see catching her on her heels just a little bit. And that ball takes her back up that, that first base side. You can see the aggressiveness at home plate. Yeah. A little sticky infield. One zip, though, Sooners. Runners now at first and second. First pitch of Grace Lines is up and away for a ball. And I think that call from Coach, Coach Gasso rounding Jana Johns around third, that is nothing more than to send a message. Aggressiveness, foot on the gas. Lions takes the 1 0 oh, up, two balls and no strikes. So Snow at first, Hanson at second. 
Alo scored easily. Probably would have scored if Stralo even played it perfectly over at second base. Sooners do lose another runner on the base pass. 2-0 pitches, a little high ball three. But you don't have a problem with it. You like the aggressiveness early. I think in that situation, that, that's more of a Janet Johns call. That's you gotta read that on the move. Gotcha. No matter no matter what Coach Gasso's calling in that moment, so much of it is momentum of the body. Where am I leaning? Where's my momentum going? And you got less than two outs, right? right. Early in the ball game. Yeah, Grace Lyons stepping up to the plate, runner in scoring position behind you. I'm not mad at it. No, I agree. I love it. When it took, at the end of the day, too, it was going to take a yeah. perfect throw to get and her. a perfect tag. And, and, it, and that's what Minnesota got. Yep. 3-1, strike two. Sarah Kitch made a really nice play behind home plate, too. That was a really nice tag without impeding the runner and getting an obstruction call. Good job by Kent. Wouldn't Kinch. that have been something? <laughs> What's that? Said <laughs> so wouldn't that have been something? Nah, the, no. The obstruction. Call. Tossing out the obstruction. Yeah, you know it happens. It happens Full a count. lot. Ground ball to short. It's going to be close at first. Nice play by Dowell on the throw across to end the inning. To the second inning, back to work for Jordy Ball, along with Aaron Miller and DJ Sanchez. I'm Chris Blank. Sooners will leave Norman tomorrow morning. Probably before many of you are up. Sooner is slated to fly out to Houston and off to Hawaii. But for now, you've got to brave the 40 degree temperatures and the winds. And this talented lineup, Sarah Kinch, first pitch swinging fouls it down the third base line. Strike one. Kinch had the nice play at home plate. See the numbers 279. Six RBIs. Or six RBI, excuse me. Have it. I have a horrible habit in plural. You're not alone. RBI. You're not alone. That happens. Maybe I should just start saying runs, runs batted, batted in. In zins. <laughs> the 0 1. In for a strike. DJ, what do you think the strike zone so far? It's a loaded question, Clint. I know, that's an unfair question. Um, to ask in the second inning, too, <laughs> by the way. You know, there have been some pitches that I think I've seen both pitchers throw that have been on that down and out right at the knee on the corner that I like that pitch that's where you're taught to throw and they're getting called balls and I have a feeling as the game goes on I think we're going to see that call get opened up a little bit but I would like to see that get called that's where you're supposed to be throwing that pitch one ball two strikes Jordy that natural motion, here it comes. Swing and a miss. I mean, Jordy Ball, wow. something else. High heat, up and away. I love that location, too. As you mentioned, struggling on those corners low to get that call. What I like is that she can go up high to get the swing through. Changing the eye level again. Speed is great. Yeah. Location, 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 location. And pitch sequence, right? Like, no Jin Rocha is just killing the game. When you see it too across the across the board with the entire staff, mm. it's not and it's not an accident that I mean Jordy Ball is doing what she's doing, but it's the entire staff. Yeah, and so much of that goes back to Coach Wurcha and the pitch calling, the way that they're preparing, everything that they're doing. It's it's not just one pitcher; it is the entire staff. For Jordy Ball in the season, that is her 68th strikeout, third so far this game. It's Chloe Evans. Behind 0-1, bunts it, foul. Charging Jana Johns, racing out. Kinsey Hansen falls between them. Ball quickly head on the count, no balls and two strikes. You would think, think, I'm, I'm looking big picture here in the top of the second. I inning. love it. What am I doing? But <laughs> you would think the hope would be the Sooners could put about four or five mm -hmm. runs maybe in the second and see Hope Troutwine and see Nicole maybe all three pitchers can throw today. You would think. The 0 2. In a perfect world, right? Ball two strikes as that misses out. But again, I think the most important thing is Sooners want to have a dub. They want to get to 16 and 0. This is a good team. <laughs> Minnesota. They're a good team. Not only is it a good team, but have taken up Oklahoma residence. Here's the 1 2 pitch. Line shot, base hit, right field. Yeah, they've got quite the uh, tour de Oklahoma, state of Oklahoma. They've been here since last Wednesday. 
they have gotten to see the entire <laughs> spectrum of Oklahoma weather. <laughs> yes, they have. They had, uh, they probably had shorts on for a few days last week, and then after this game is over, they're traveling back to Stillwater to finish a game from Sunday that was rain shortened that they were leading. Unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. And then they're off to Austin. I'll be out there calling games. Oh, you'll be, right. I'll be on the call. I will. Yes, Taking a I'll flight miss. out Friday morning. First pitch misses low and in. On ball, no strikes. I love this shot of Jordy Ball. Watch the arm start swinging. Gets that attitude and one motion into the glove. Bounce back to Ball. I'm going to say foul ball. Home plate umpire popped out right away. I didn't see it. Maybe off the foot, dead ball possibly? Maybe. That's got to be a ball and a strike. That's got to be the call. I'll tell you, you know, this much, though. You know, one thing that we've seen a couple of times this year that, you know, Aaron and DJ, as it progresses, the change to the out of the batter's box yep. rule this year. Uh, and again, we it, it happened against Oklahoma. I want to say in the Mark Campbell Classic where UCLA players out of the box, it's no longer an out. It's just a strike. Just a strike. Here's the 1-1. One, one. The, way, the way I've read that rule too, Plank, and, and maybe you're brushed up, is that if the ball is in fair play, it's coach's discretion. Right. They either take the out or That's right. take him back, take him back to the box for a strike. And in the game where it happened, the UCLA player had reached, was on first, so you brought it back and made it a strike. But if you had if you had made the out, if you had been able to register the out, you were set. Pop up, Kinsey Hansen calls off everyone and makes the catch. Two way. And I think that is one of, I can think of maybe three or four hot topics in the sport of softball right now. Video replay, right? Hot, hot topic, big opinions, both sides of the spectrum. As you and I talked about, the obstruction rule at home plate yes. has been a very Such divisive a call right now. The uh, the batter's box rule with slappers, that was yep. a, a huge hit to our sport. And, th and the concept of a slapper in general, I am starting to see the trend of that, that kind of go away in the sport of softball. No question. That pendulum swinging back to the, the big power, the multifaceted athlete. No more pitcher only, really, right? We're not seeing that a lot in the sport of softball anymore. We want dynamic players. Um, you know, we played in, in different eras here at, yep. at OU, and so many trends, so many changes in the sport of softball. Here's the old one to Sidney Stralo, the second baseman, grounded foul. One zip Sooners, we're in the top of the second inning. It's Aaron Miller, DJ Sanchez, I'm Chris Plank. Special early afternoon edition of Sooner Softball. This game was moved up from a 5 o'clock first pitch to 4 o'clock due to concerns about cold temperature as the sun starts to set here in Norman. It ended up being a gorgeous day, only maybe a couple extra layers than you would typically wear to the ballpark. No balls and two strikes. Ball brings it home. <laughs> Just missed. Can we circle back around to whether or not Let's I like the strikes or not? <laughs> because I have an answer now. <laughs> Look at this. That's, <laughs> that's where that pitch yeah. is supposed to be. Yeah. Jordy and, Ball was feeling it, too. <laughs> and I, I think with that count, yeah, that is just way yes. too close. Keep in mind, I always go back to the definition of a strike. It's any part of the ball. Any part of the ball that touches the white of that plate. Here's the one-two pitch. Foul straight back. You know, we've, you, we got in on the fringe of it, but you hit on all those incredibly hot topics mm -hmm. and that, have, that are starting to change and kind of... I don't. I don't necessarily want to say completely. Change it's challenging the, the, of the growth. Game, yeah, but and it is right. I'll do you one. There I'll you do go. you one better. Is uh, I've called some games at Longhorn Network in Austin. We are. They are implementing. One, this two. one gets away. Yeah, Hanson's not going to be able to cut down Evans, who advances to second. They've. They're equipped for video replay at Texas. So there's been a few times in some games I've called down at LHN where they've utilized mm -hmm. and exercised that option. Um, obviously, Big 12 given the green light on test driving some of that equipment at, at certain pilot properties. And 
That being one of them, it's interesting to see it in action as an analyst. 2-2 two -two pitch, another wild pitch all the way to the backstop. Hanson hustles down, and just like that, Minnesota has the tying run at third with two outs here in the top of the second and a full count. Hanson's going to jog out and chat with Jordy Ball. Seen anything, DJ, and the mechanics? No, you know, I think at times she's trying to be a little bit too fine, and yeah. she's throwing good pitches. Got the missed call there on what it, what should have been strike three, but she's throwing good pitches. She just needs to continue to settle down and not try to be too perfect. Meeting is over. A little extra time from our home plate umpire, Lee Bowen Don. Now we're ready. Full count. Jordy Ball brings it home. Check swing, ball four. She Trey wanted Lowe that was walk. Pretty, yeah. She was pretty yeah. fired up about a walk. She wanted that walk. And you don't see that much from yep. Jordy Ball. Only eight, only eight free pa free passes on the yeah. year. That was her ninth of the year. <laughs> In 38, now, now 39 innings this season. And Jen Rocha, Sooner pitching coach, is going to make a trip out to the circle to try to calm down our mound of visits circle visits this year brought to you by walden cleaners and laundry where the difference is quality just probably a chance to calm her down here a little bit dj you know yes and no but i think circling back to that stat talking about the fact that she has only walked eight batters yep. that's unheard of for a freshman yeah yep. I mean, let's not forget she's a freshman trying to early in the season learn her way yeah in in a game that I don't care what high level you played, and I, we all know the high level that Jordy Ball played before OU, the speed of the game is different. Yeah. The way the game goes is different. So it's it's just a different animal. So the fact that she is able to control the games like she has, and I, Coach Rocha coming out immediately, you know, we're up here talking about how she doesn't walk people. <laughs> here we see Coach Rocha immediately saying the exact same thing. Yeah. She does not miss spots yeah. like that. I, I love this ratio. 65 strikeouts to now yes. only 9 walks. That's yeah. the ratio you want to see. At three Ks today. Yeah. So 68 strikeouts to 9 walks is the first pitch misses to Megan Trey, the first baseman, for strike one. First and third, two outs. Sooners up one zip. We're in the top of the second inning. Pitch. Low. Runner goes. Hanson's going to give up the bag. Just throw it back to Jordy Ball. Stolen base for Strela. Well, Minnesota is a very good offensive team, but one thing that they do do a lot, and I think that this has been sort of an Achilles heel for them, they strike out a lot. High strikeout numbers. We've seen already three today for Jordy Ball, but Minnesota, they do strike out a ton. The 2-0 pitch catches that inside corner. All of those have been swing throughs, yes. too. And that, that, I think, is more the story to tell here for Minnesota is that they're an aggressive offense, mm -hmm. um, which I like that approach against Jordy Ball because she hammers the strike zone and she hammers hard. And she throws hard. So that's that's just nature of the beast, I think, with a team that swings a lot. 2-1 hitter. Base is loaded for Minnesota with a nine-hole hitter. Ellie Jensen headed to the plate. A lot might not want to hear this, but the competitor in me loves the fact that Jordan Ball is getting tested. Agreed. I think she needs this. Absolutely. I think she needs this at home. Been on the road a lot. Has she been tested in the past? Sure. But this, only a one-run lead, bases loaded, two outs at home. Freshman needs this. Lefty Jensen digs in first pitch, misses up and in, ball one. And early in a game, I'm glad you brought that up, Aaron. Was she tested by Tennessee? Yes, it came later right. in that game. She bounced back and shut down Utah the following day. This is as big of a threat as any team has had against Jordy Ball this early in a game. Bases loaded, two outs. Here's the 1-0. Called, ooh, ball on another close pitch, this time on the outside corner. I'm, I am surprised that we have not seen Hansen come out. Yep, I was, and have that, that word. Thing. 
Well, and again, this is a freshman. Yeah. She's still a freshman. Everything she's doing, I think we forget, but she is a freshman. 2-0, bounce to short. Lions has nowhere to go. She tried to get the runner at second, but everybody's safe. We are knotted up at one here in the second. Again, I'll go back to this. I think right before that pitch, the game needed to slow down. Things were happening fast. The momentum felt like it was getting sucked into the, the Minnesota dugout. And you've got to give it to Minnesota because they are pushing on the gas pedal when they are witnessing a freshman struggle in the circle. Yeah. As we've said since the start of this game, this is a very good Minnesota team. They've been tested. They've played really tough games. Women's College World Series level teams. It's a Power 5 program. Not easy. Not easy. Lauren Espelin 0 for 1. The leadoff hitter bats with the bases loaded. Grounded out to short her first time off. Sooners knotted up with the Gophers and one apiece in the second. Foul back. A ball and a strike. And now Minnesota's been once through the lineup. Yeah. Right? They've seen her. Back to the top of this order. Now, now is where you dig in, right? Yes. Like, it, as a pitcher, you're thinking, okay, I, I've got to make adjustments. It's the chess match. You've seen them once. They've seen you once. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Line shot. And here's that aggressive nature that we see from Minnesota. Esplin is coming out, bases loaded, putting that pressure on Jordy Ball coming out swinging. Now, here's what I do like. Jordy Ball's ahead in the count. Yeah. Which we got in this situation because of working behind in the count to the back half of this Minnesota lineup. So it's good to see a one-two count here against Esplin. The one-two. Hard hit to short. Lions to second inning over. Solid D as usual. An inning each team with a couple of hits. But as Jada strides to the plate, I thought Aaron, I thought DJ, it was pretty big time to see Jordy Ball fight through that and get out of a bases loaded jam. Which you take after this 1 0 pitch, which is in for strike. Well, and that's going back to, I mean, Aaron, you just talked about it. She needs to be tested. Yeah. She yeah. needs to be tested and put in situations how is the freshman going to respond? And wrapping back around to the top of that Minnesota lineup going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Esplin and getting out of a jam. Now, here's where we see the Sooner offense that we've been talking about since day one come back, answer back, get a run back for the freshman. Well, and I, I can hear, I can just hear Coach yes. Gasso in the back of my mind going, you're not <laughs> bulletproof. You still have to work. You still have to get after it. When you play good teams, when you're the number one team in the nation and you're undefeated, you're the reigning national champion, the target on your back is huge. So you're not bulletproof. You still have to go out and do the things, the little things correctly. And uh, I think Jordan Ball got a taste of that. And that she's got to clean some things up. Three Good balls point. and a strike to Jada Coleman. Pitch ball four. And the fastest sooner is aboard to lead things off in the second. I have to tell you, as a pitcher, former coach, one of my biggest pet peeves. No. Offense gets a run on the board and coming out, lead off walking off. the leadoff batter. It drives me insane. <laughs> and it always, almost always comes back around to bite you. You want to know why I like you is to speak <laughs> candidly. That's true. And that's what people need it to hear. It drives me nuts. Yeah, it's the game within the game, right? Like, the, those are, those are the no-nos. Yes. That are inside, the uh, under the surface level knowledge of the game is that your team goes out and ties it up. The last thing you want to do is give up a little, an inch of momentum. Because with a team like Oklahoma, they take it and run yes. with it. And yeah. you can't give this offensive lineup an inch. And Peace knows that. She's yeah. a veteran pitcher. Yeah. She is a senior. She has faced the best in the country. She knows that. With Sabrito 1-0, bunts it foul, a ball and a strike. Sabrito, by the way, has been fantastic. I know the numbers don't tell the story, just hitting 286. But four of those six hits came in Saturday's games at the Mary Nutter Classic. She is she was a big-time difference maker for the Sooners 
in Palm Springs and you get the sense as she gets more comfortable we're going to see a lot more of one of the best young prospects in college softball is the one one Mrs. High Tuner Morgan transfer all Pac-12 performer at shortstop last year she's now played short third first center left and right or uh, left and right excuse me she hasn't been out at center yet she can do it all She's ahead here, two balls and a strike. Ground ball to short, this could be two. To second, Coleman almost beat the throw. Bang, bang, play at second base. Patty Gasso thought she was safe. I thought she was safe. Will we see the replay? Because I've been uh, alerted. Here we go. I've been alerted by none other than our athletic director that we are locked and loaded, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. The first replay, Joe Castiglione said, it's not only, oh, she's out. Dang it. <laughs> it's a bang-bang play at second <laughs> base. But that angle, it looks like. Well, here's, I don't know. Well, I don't uh -uh. think her foot's on the bag. And the other thing you got to ask is, okay, foot hits the bag. Is the ball secured in the web of the glove? That's what I'm looking at. Hard angle, I think, from yeah. the airplane because you can't really see where that I foot is. I wonder hits. if we've got any other angles potentially of that. Great job, by the way. Grant Wade and our crew back in the Sooner Sports TV studios. So our, this is history. History is replay. happening right now. The first ever replayed call in Sooner Brought softball. to you by Joe Castiglione. Yes. <laughs> None other. None other. Jada Coleman's, Jada Coleman's thinking that she is headed back to second base. Patty okay. Gasso is looming let's, over it as let's, well. Let's dig into this. Thoughts on instant replay. I love it. I know. As long as we don't sit here much longer. Let's dig into it, right? <laughs> I I like it. I, although I'm a purist at heart. Right. And that's the thing about it. But it takes... Aaron, you, we've both played this sport. You have to control what you can control. Right, right. There are so many uncontrollables in this game. It takes away, it takes away. And it takes away the, the human element, yes. right? The human element. But with. But, but I'm all about getting I, the game right. Yeah, right? agreed. I'm about getting, getting the game, game right. right. I, I can go, I can see both sides of I, the coin. I can side with both sides of the argument. Um, and, and I've heard all sides of the argument from yeah, all I'm different sure. coaches, I'm right? Sure. I mean, you, you hear it all over, but I think that. You know, you see it in the MLB, you see it in collegiate baseball, and I think that, that it's it's part of forging that path of, of the equity of all sports. I think that that angle is really important and something that we've got to hold our guns on. But I do agree there's a nostalgia, right, with the human element of the yeah. game. I like the choreographed dancing. That That's very that's... much an Aaron Miller special <laughs> right there. That, I was all about the dancing. Chitsen and Hartog and Evans. This is the only drawback, is when you, you have a situation that ends up taking this much time from a game that prides itself on being so yeah. fast moving. But uh, I'll take getting the call right, yes. especially one as important as that. Here comes the umpires, at least one of them. There's our umpires. Right. Leah Bowen Dom is behind home plate. She's not out yet. That's Troy Kuykendall, Cody Little. It's brought to you by Century Roofing on guard for Oklahoma. Century Roofing. All right, here we go. Call her out. All right. So the first replay in the history of Marita Hines Field is the umpires getting it right. Now, there is one thing from Piper Ritter who came out. She had a stopwatch. So, and now time is called. They're going to come together again. Patty Gasso kind of looming over this, too. Whatever it was, she seems to be satisfied with. And the Sooners will have a runner at first with one out. They'll allow Autumn Pease a couple of throws to get warmed up after uh, I don't know, four, four minutes to get it figured out. So not too shabby. Patty Gasso getting clarification from 
Leah Bowendong. You know, we talked about the ratio, strikeout to walk ratio of Jordy Ball. I'm, I'm looking back at 2021 numbers from Autumn Pease. I mean, 101 strikeouts to nine, 19 walks. This is this is a pitcher that is no stranger to sitting people down. I nope. mean, I, I, I completely, completely agree with the call to put her in the circle. I think that she's kept the Sooners at bay now, going through inning number two. Um, what's what is, I mean, definitively the most potent lineup, the most potent offense in the, in the country. I thought she's, she's strong in the circle. She has, and the thing that right now has come back to bite her is three walks. Yeah. And yeah. we've seen a couple hard hit balls, but we are yet to see something really, really get squared up off of peace. Yeah. First pitch to Riley Boone, misses low for a ball. So Brito is aboard at first on the fielder's choice, and Coleman retired at second. And everything seemed to work smoothly in our first replay. Well done, Max. Sooner Vision crew behind that as well. The 1-0 is laced foul. Riley Boone, 391 average on the season, has started 11 games for the Sooners, this being her 11th. Five runs batted in, a couple of extra base hits, including Grand Slam home run. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch to the Sooner right fielder. It's a little up, 2-1. I love how you say that so nonchalant, including uh, yeah. a grand slam. <laughs> that's all home she run. does. And that's just, you know, yeah, a typical, typical day, day in the office. That's how it rolls for Riley Boone. <laughs> typical day. She's hit the ball hard this year. Let's see if she can find a gap here. She's got that left field line, swings on a Hit and run, Brito takes second. Wait, now it was a foul ball. What? They check with All the first right. base umpire and he said she didn't swing, which is. I'm not even blinded by blood enough <laughs> to know. Wait, hold on, now they're gonna Are hit. Are we gonna replay again? <laughs> we're gonna, I think they were, I think he got perplexed. I think they were asking him or he thought, yeah. right, right, right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Strike two. <laughs> so two balls and two strikes. I think the catcher kind of confused things too. And nothing against the catch, but to I, clarify, she her. that was a, a late protection, a wave to protect the yeah. runner. I mean, way late. Burrito in motion. More like a run and hit. Here's the uh, two-two. Hard hit ball down the first baseline. Fair. Into the corner, here comes Brito. Oh, Riley Boone's on her horse, on her way to third, and she is safe. A run scoring triple has ignited the crowd at Marina Heinz Field as Riley Boone gets them on their feet. Just as we say, yet to see a ball get squared up. Knuckleball. Here comes Riley Boone. Yeah. And peace with the knuckleball off speed. Not full in Riley Boone, reloaded and takes the ball down the line. So good. Goodness. So good. Two strikes. Yes. Tough, tough call before that. She's got a wave to protect the runner. Here's my favorite thing. I'm all I'm a sucker for great base running. That girl was on her yep. horse. She, she was faster as she gained momentum as she rounded first base. First triple of the season for the Owasso product. She's at third, Sooners up 2-1, as Tiare Jennings digs in. Tiare's due to leave the yard. 2-1 is a little up, or 1-1 one, one is a little up, two balls and a strike. Jennings on the season, nine home runs. That currently leads the Sooners. Third on the team with her 17 runs batted in. The 1-1 one, one pitch to the Sooner second baseman is popped up right side. Easy play. Stralo makes it. And there's two outs, and here comes Olive. That was another knuckleball. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you're gonna we're gonna start to see that more coming from Pease. I think um, not to say that Boone's approach wasn't spot on, but to me it was almost a happy accident. Just waving the barrel, hammers it down the line. Like that that pitch so far, even despite the triple from Boone is working no, it has it's been solid catching jennings off balance yeah. and she's going to have to change speeds oh. but here come here come the four they're going to intentionally walk jocelyn allo 
So that'll put Alo at first. And this place, in case you can't tell, does not approve. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Though the second ball was fairly close to the strike zone. Here's the third one from Pease. I'll tell you this much. That's not much. I'm getting that. I'm getting uh, that pitch in the other batter's box. I was going to say, uh, that's right on the catch corner. Catch plate. See if, no, Alo's already thrown her bat, tosses her Evo shield, and jogs down to first base. <laughs> oh, the frustration has been high for Jossie in getting the opportunities. I had a bad feeling. <laughs> big smile on her face. <laughs> As here comes Deanna Johns, 2-1 Sooners, a chance to add a little separation between themselves and the Golden Gophers. Kinsey Hansen waits on deck. Johns walked her first time up and was thrown out trying to score from second. First pitch misses up high, ball one. I gotta say, this is, you love to be in this spot if you're Deanna Johns, right? No question. But my, my biggest advice to Johns right now would be don't make the moment bigger than it is. It's so easy to get hyped up in that energy and that electricity. You got to stay within yourself. 1-0 pitches in for a strike. Well, and something, too, that we've seen Peace do, she walked Allo last inning into uh, intentionally, unintentionally, yeah. and then gave the other walk right back to Jana Johns. And we're seeing right. it again here, having a hard time finding the zone, coming off of that walk to Alo. Two balls and a strike to Jana Johns. We're in the bottom of the second inning. 2-1, Sooners lead it over the Gophers. Alo at first, Riley Boone at third. Autumn Pease brings home the 2-1. And this ball is all gone! Over the, oh, it hits the right field wall. I thought it was out of here. It'll score Alo easily. Johns fell down rounding second. Alo will still score, but Johns is tagged out at second. Oh, I thought Johns had hit it out of the park. And <laughs> that ball hit too. the wind and came down. But the Sooners added two. And they make it a four to one game. That play at second is huge. Yeah. If yeah. Johns gets tagged out, Alo's run doesn't count, but Jana stumbles and stays alive. What a half inning. We head to the third. Sooners lead it 4-1. This is Sooners softball. 4-1 Sooners lead Minnesota. I thought it was gone. Jana Johns stumbled rounding second base to keep the play alive, and it ends up being a two-run double that pounds off the wall. Oklahoma leads it after this first pitch to start the third inning to Natalie Den Hartog. We'll get our keys to the game. And we'll start with you, DJ Sanchez. Keys to a Sooner victory here today. For Jordy Ball, she needs to continue to do what she's done, but she needs to work ahead in the count. We're seeing her here with a 1-0 count, getting in a little bit of trouble early, working behind, so she needs to continue to apply pressure to these Minnesota hitters by working on top. 1-0 pitch, swing, and a miss. One ball and one strike, and Aaron Miller, Riverwind Casino, keys to the game, count management. It is. I, I think that we, we've seen now a, a couple of swings on knuckleballs, swinging in, in pitcher's counts, you know, and I, I think that comes with just having more decisiveness early in the count. And... There's a base hit in the left field. This sounds wild because there's a, a, a three-run lead here, but that's not enough for Oklahoma. That's not their standard. And I think if you were to ask Coach Gasso right now what her thoughts are, she'd say it, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. We need to be better. You know, Terry Jennings struggling, a couple pop-ups struggling to find that timing. I think just a, there's a little bit of pressure at the plate, and... You know, maybe the second inning, busting three runs would open the floodgates, but there's still room for polishing, I think, offensively. Riverwind Casino, keys to the game. Our first pitch with a runner first. McKenna Dow is up high for ball one. Dow, a strikeout victim back in the first. It's It's been a labor so far no for Jordy Ball. And again, we're seeing another 1-0 count. 
she is successful, part of the part of the key to her success and what she's done so far has been her working in good counts. It's I don't care who you are, how great of stuff you have, if you don't put yourself in a pitcher's count and work ahead, you're taking some of that pressure off of these hitters and you're making your job a lot harder. It's a lot more difficult to change speeds when you're behind 2-0, yeah. as much as I love to see it. I yeah. love a 2-0 <laughs> change up more than anybody in the world, but it makes it more difficult to throw your pitches and go to the sequences that you want to go to. 2-0 is up high, 3-0. Sooner grab a lead, and now Jen Rocha is going to jog out and have a conversation with her star pupil, Again, Jordy Ball. Getting tested, yeah. right? I think that this is just part of it. And it's it's not to say that she's in, like, these these huge situations that are just going to make or break her, but it's, it's these small moments of feeling pressure. And when you've got an offense that is... You know, a run, what is our run deficit? Now it's the run comparison, run scored versus allowed. I mean, well, you dig. I'm going to make the point here. <laughs> when, you ha when you have an offense that is putting up the numbers that they're putting up, a lot of times in the circle, you do not feel that pressure. Not at all. You don't. And so I think for Jordy Ball as a freshman who's experiencing a hell of a lot of success right now, as we approach later into the season, She's got to have these reps being tested in the back pocket because, as we all know, when we get to postseason, Big 12 championship play, regional supers, the moments of high stakes, high pressure get more often and more often and more. They, the frequency of those situations go way up. 3-0 pitch is ball four. That run differential, 141 runs this season for the Sooners. They've only given up 17, including the run in the top of the second inning here. No, you leads it four to one. We're in the third. And now I would imagine activity starting in the Sooner pin. We're a little bit blocked by the temporary bleach. I don't think they're gonna pull her though. I think that she's this is work. exactly I, love it. I think that they want this they for her this. too. They've got she's gotta work through it. Well and how many times has Jordan Ball been in this situation? Yeah. She, I mean, she genuinely has it now. We're talking right now about a game where she has a three-run lead. Yeah, exactly. You know, but in the same hand, it's we are yet to see her really come out and struggle. Right now, I think she has more walks right now than she's had in any game so far this yeah. season. And working, again, 1-0, seeing a lot of hitters counts. Pop foul. One ball and one strike. To the catcher, Sarah Kinch. Well, you mentioned Plank. She got tested late against Tennessee. Um, but this, or I would I would struggle to find another game or situation in this season where with this, this much game left, with five innings left, that she's had this type of pressure. Well, and you would be correct. Yeah. Part of that, she's, she's got to one one figure it out. Time. Yeah. And you're not always, as much as we would like to think that it, that it is always sunshine and rainbows, I'm going to come out and strike out 15, and we're going to ride off into the sunset. That's not how it works. It'd be nice. Sounds great and very. I, I like it. But you've got to know how to win a game, get out of tough situations when you don't have your best stuff. Right. Here's the 2-1. Swing and a miss, 2-2. Two, two. That so, might be the pitch. Yep. That was a big time. So she's already walked two hitters and has hit a batter, three free pass. She gave up four, you know, in eight innings against yeah, Tennessee. Yeah. So now it's eight innings. We're through two full innings into the third, two batters in. Now the third batter. Here's a 2-2 pitch, a high ball three. But here's what I love, and this is what makes Jordy Ball the freshman that everyone is talking about. And it, it has given her, I truly believe, some of the, a lot of the success. It's the key to a lot of the success that she has had. She's struggling a little bit right now. She's not hitting her spots the way she would like. You can't see it on her face. 3-2. Mm -hmm. Popped up a mile high behind home plate and out of play. Her demeanor has not changed. She is bouncing around as much as she as she ever does. We still see her nodding, doing all the things she does if she was up 4 nothing, throwing a no-hitter right now. And that is what makes her good. I think you could say the same thing about Minnesota. Yep. 
even yep. though they're down three runs, they don't they don't look it. Yep. The approach, the aggressiveness at the plate. They three. know this game's in reach. Popped up. Jordy Ball called for it. Kinsey Hansen calls off everyone and makes the catch. Usually, you're doing everything you can to make sure the catcher doesn't have to worry about that. Kinsey Hansen's calling people off. <laughs> One away. Huge outs. I we're just up here talking. Jordy Ball, hit your pitches, hit your pitches. Good spot right there. One thing that Minnesota has done a pretty good job of is laying off anything up in the zone for the most part. Ball has thrown some pitches that have done a good job of working through the zone. When she does that, Minnesota, she's getting those swing throughs. When she elevates just a hair, Minnesota is laying off. First pitch misses outside to Chloe Evans. Single drove in a run. In her only at bat in the second. Lefty digs in with one out. And again, a runner in scoring position. With Din Hartog at second. Kenna Dow at first. 4 1, Sooners lead it. The 1 0. Low, two balls and no strikes. I really think I said it earlier about throwing the off speed in hitters' counts. I feel like we're going to start seeing a little bit of that from Ball. Throwing the 2-0 <laughs> -oh changeup, throwing the 2-1 changeup. Two balls and no strikes. Here's the pitch. All three. What it is for me, and I, I'll put it to rest after this, because I know we've been talking <laughs> a lot about adjustments for Ball, is when you miss, miss competitively. Agreed. That's the difference. Right now, her misses are big misses. Here's the 3-0. Called strike. Just caught that outside corner. Because as a pitcher, you you don't want to go at the plate all the time. That, that would be a horrible game plan. But a good pitcher is able to miss close. They're able to miss with late life, late spin, late movement. 3-1. Fouled straight back. Full count. And to me, the miss is just, you're not getting, she's not getting any bites. No question. And we've seen two good pitches in a row, but now we're sitting full count. That yeah. pressure is still on Jordy Ball. Yeah. It's not on Evans at the plate. Still only one out in the inning. The full count pitch, popped foul and out of play. Big moment here for Minnesota. And you can hear it, you can feel it. You can it. feel it. I mean, you got the tying run at the plate, you got less than two outs, runners in scoring position, and as you mentioned, a, a big count here, you know? A full, full boat. Ball breaks at home, runners not going, ball four. Bases are loaded. And the pressure keeps coming. Pressure keeps coming. And you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna expand the focus. I think that the, this defense also needs to be tested. Plank, this is something that you and I chatted about prior to this game starting is a little bit of miscues, you know, last week and some sloppiness uh, or, uh, defensively that Coach Gasso spoke very candidly about is we gotta clean things up. First pitch is up high to Kayla Chavez for ball one. Not, oh, they call the strike. Beautiful. They got the up range. Not that defense has been messy today, but when when there's ducks on the pond, when your pitcher's struggling a bit, you got to rely on the defense to have your back because pitchers got to come back mm. over the strike zone. She might have got a call on that first pitch, the 0-1. Swing and a miss. There's the off speed. Yes. Last eight hitters for Jordy Ball. Walk, hit by pitch, fielder's choice, ground out. Single walk, pop out, walk. Mm. Well, that's starting. I mean, she struck out three of the first four hitters. And now we're starting to see Minnesota put the ball in play. Going back to Aaron, defense has got to step up here. Yeah. The 0-2. One ball, two strikes. Because the last thing you want to see here well what minnesota wants to see is her struggle to hit that strike zone right give us a free pass walk in and run mm -hmm. jordy knows she's got to come pretty meaty 
over the strike zone. She's, she does not want to give up a free base. So she's got to rely on that defense behind her. Two misses up high, two balls and two strikes. Ball nods in approval. Whatever Kinsey Hansen is relaying. Go ahead run is in the batter's box as Jordy Ball has struggled a bit with her control here in the top of the third. Something too, early in this game, I felt like there were a few calls that were tight that could have been called strikes. You're not around the zone yeah. as that ball's fouled off. You're not around the zone tight. You're not going to get that borderline yeah. call anymore. Yeah. You weren't getting it in the first inning. You're really got, not going to get it in the third if we aren't throwing yeah. good, good balls, pitches. Right? You, you know, exactly. missing with good pitches. Competitive misses for sure. You got to give props to Minnesota because they have they've seen they've seen a crack and they are exposing it. I think the approach at the plate has been spot on. Two balls, two strikes, 4-1 Sooner Lee with the bases loaded, ball three from Jordy Ball. Looks like she pulled a little, I don't know if that was a true change up, but a little bit of an off speed, maybe off speed curve there. And I think we've seen her pull that out of her pocket a couple times. We're yet to see her catch that corner for a strike. She's rolling off that hip just a hair and catching a little bit too much chalk. 3-2 pitch, popped up on the infield. Jana Johns has room, two away. She makes the catch. It was a big at bat. It was a good at bat, long. Yes. Saw a lot of pitches, and that's something that Minnesota's been doing really well is making Jordy labor. And there's always a lot of talk about her approach in the circle, right? The bouncing and the movement, and just understand if you're if you're watching Jordy Ball work that 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 expends energy. And the more pitches you throw, the more energy is coming out of the tank. And Minnesota is doing a heck of a job with making her labor. Stray low, first pitch, misses up, ball one. That seemed to be a pretty good spot. Stray low walked, stole a base her last time. Good spot, little bit of off speed. Again, a, every batter, it feels almost 1-0 count, 1-0 count. One ball, no strikes. The pitch, caught that inside corner. Good pitch, a ball and a strike. Something too, and Aaron, you talked about this earlier in the game, what an aggressive yeah. team offensively that Minnesota is, but you can see the game plan coming out in the work. Jordy Ball throwing a lot of pitches. We're seeing quality at bats because they are taking a lot of pitches. Tense moment here in the third inning, the 1-1. One, one. Good looking pitch, miss low, no get, no attack or at least attempted a swing by Strela. And again, Jordy Ball falls behind two balls and a strike. 4-1 Sooners, but Minnesota has loaded the bases here in the third. And this died down as the 2-1 is popped up. On the infield, Taylor Snow calls off everyone, makes the catch, and the inning is over. And Doug Hamilton up in Broken Arrow. First pitch to Kinsey Hansen is pop foul. Joe Castiglione from the booth. Toby Baldwin is here. Eric Bailey, That's Ryan some celebrities Aver, in the house. John Hoover, <laughs> Joel Manning. It's a star studded press box here at Marina Hines today. Sooners lead a four to one. Kinsey Hansen one for one on the day. She's single, stranded it second in the first. Kinsey four home runs this season. 11 runs batted in. How about five home runs in 12 right here? Oh, ground ball. Fair. That stayed fair was bobbled by Chavez at third, and Hansen beats it out. This is where, again, Momentum shift. OU, Jordy Ball working out of the bases loaded jam. And then here comes Kinsey Hansen taking a little bit of a gift there because, I mean, she got sawed off. How did that stay fair is what I want yes. <laughs> What's that thing went down the line. And Tria Coleman is going to pinch run here for the Sooners. So the freshman out of Houston had a base hit against... Well, against Texas State down in Houston. And now she'll pinch run. 
typically the first pinch runner we'll see off the bench this season has been Hannah Kaur, but maybe Patty Gasso thinking about leaving Tria in the game while well, she went to catch, but we'll see. Talented young freshman out of Houston, and she's aboard for Taylor Snow. That role that Aaron Miller held in 2013, one of the first pinch runners off the bench, right? Oh, National yeah. championship year. Yep. We called that game. Right? That's right. Well, we called 16. We Aaron wasn't. I wasn't cool enough in 13 yet, as the first pitch is up high for ball one. Maybe we did. Did we? I think so. I think, my gosh. I'm getting old. We've been together a long time, Blake. We have. <laughs> and then, Big 12 Player of the Year by yes. her senior season. Oh, the journey. <laughs> Here's Grew the one. Up a lot. Here's the 1 0 pitch to Taylor Snow. A little soft slap, beautifully placed past the pitcher. She's safe at first. I mean, you couldn't walk out there and place the softball in a better spot than where that ended up. Speed, wow. placement, all of it. That's the beauty of snow is the triple threat. Maybe I have a soft spot for that because I, I like to think myself as the triple threat as well. The lefty that can flash the speed, lay the bunt. Good call first, I mean, too. the barrel control is just so beautiful. Big smile from Snow. Sooners have a chance to blow this game open here with Grace Lyons, who grounded out to short. Her first time up, hit the ball hard, too. Strike call that one. Round out to short, ended the threat in the first. So hard to defend. When you've got someone on the left-hand side, a couple feet closer to first that has power, has the speed, you don't know how to play them on defense. Where do you stand? No ball and a strike. Here it comes. A little out, one ball, one strike. You, Nicole Pinley is very good. Jada Mendez. Col Mendez is great. Jada Coleman yep. currently. Now add or continue to keep Kaylin Snow in that mix with names like that. One ball, one strike. The pitch to Lyons. Just misses outside. Good hitters count here. Two balls and a strike. And that does break for Taylor Snow a bit of a kind of a rough spot that she was in the midst of. Because prior to that base hit, she was 0 for her previous 7. Batting 464. I know. Mm -hmm. Still hitting over 450, the 2-1. I want to be in a rough spot and hit 464. <laughs> said everyone ever. Wow. Uh, two balls, two strikes. There's a good look at Taylor Snow. Came in as a second baseman. He's ended up playing a little outfield and now seemingly the everyday first baseman. First and second. Nobody out in the bottom of the third. 4-1 sooner lead. There's a line drive foul down the first baseline into the right field corner. Base lines will take the walk to readjust after hammering that one foul down the right field. Curious to see, I have a feeling Pease is gonna pull that knuckleball, that off speed that she's been throwing. If she does, the way and the timing and the way that Grace Lyons is sitting, here it comes. 2-2. Two, two. Oh, it. well out in front of you. You knew it was coming because it. of the foul ball, too, yep. right? Yep. Disrupt the timing. Already struggling to get it behind the between the white lines. You can just see she pulls the string. Those first two knuckles, late rotate, and look how it falls off the table. And that deception, yeah. too, yeah. right? That's a great pitch. Great pitch. Great setup. First strikeout of a Sooner hitter. Here's Jada Coleman. Lions at first. Sharia Coleman, the pinch runner at second. First pitch to Jada. Hulo, ball one. Jada walked and was called out on a bang-bang play at second base. It gave us our first use of replay in the history of Marita Hines Field. Each coach gets two challenges, and that's it. And until otherwise, it is officially brought to you by Mr. Joe Castiglione <laughs> himself. The 1-0 almost hit her. I call it a bang play. It was it was too close for a bang bang. It just bang. Now stick that one in your arsenal. I like that. A that. bang play. Just bang. Okay. 
I like it. Closer than bang bang. We'll implement it on my list of adjectives that I steal from yeah. Toby every chance I get. Here's the two up. And the dirt ball three. Well, I gave you Bugs Bunny change up. Yeah, but lollipop cart two. Now it's just a Bugs Bunny yep. change. Just I Bugs like Bunny that. change. You know, the cannon. You don't want to have a Bugs Bunny change. I just want to put that out there <laughs> <laughs> for everyone to too, hear. It's too slow. You don't want a Bugs Bunny change. It's not deceptive. Here's the 3 0 pitch to Coleman, taken all the way. Ball four on a really close 3 0 pitch. In fact, Kinch thought it was a strike. She can't believe it. No blamer. And now the bases are loaded for Alyssa Brito. Jada Coleman, two plate appearances, two walks so far on the season for Jada. Amp those walk totals up to 12. That's good for second on the team right now. Here's Brito. Reached on a fielder's choice the last time up. Hit it hard, though, and takes the first pitch for a strike. Base is loaded. One out. A good, a good handler of the bat here. Are we making bets? I mean, what are you trying to say? I'm what are we wondering saying? if, if I, I didn't see Coach Gasso get too involved in the call. I don't know if they might try to lay down something here. They won't, and instead it's hit right off the glove of the third baseman. The throw home is in time to get Coleman as it ricocheted right to Dowlett short. Wow. Give props where they yeah, do. I mean, no heck of a defensive play. Third base knocks it down, and it's the reaction. It's the reaction from Dowlett shortstop that you have to tip your cap. Quick thinking, could have easily tossed to third, but instead she turns, she pivots off the throw to home. What a big time play at home, too. And that would have been a huge insurance run. So I, I love that decision from Dow at shortstop. I think that that's a huge heads up play there. Nice stretch by Kinch, didn't get too far off the plate. Two out, Sooners need a big two out hit here from Riley Boone, who tripled the last time she was up. 4-1 Sooners, first pitch misses outside, ball one. So Snow's at third, Coleman's at second, Rito is at first. That's some pretty good speed on the bases. And that right field line is wide open for Boone if she wants it again. The 1-0 misses high, ball two. I mean, Evans shaded a bit more towards right center field straight away in center and left. I'm a little confused by that shift, honestly, because Boone rips a, an off-speed right down that right field line just an at-bat ago. Here's the 2-0 to Booney. In for a strike, two balls and a strike. You mentioned triple threats. Yeah. Boone doesn't maybe have the power that some of the triple threats we speak of did, but man, when she gets a hold of one, look out. That thing goes a mile. Here's the 2-1. Ball three. I know what I'm doing if I'm Boone. If it's anywhere close, if it's sweet, if it's fat, I'm, I'm literally swinging out of my shoes. <laughs> I will spin myself into the ground. Here's the 3-1. Ooh. Look pretty good. She takes strike two. <laughs> On a piece. Has battled. Both pitchers have battled. We've seen a lot of walks this game. <laughs> and it is, it is something that has put both of these pitchers in some tough situations. The 3-2. Ball four, a bases loaded walk on a close pitch on the outside corner, make it 5-1 Oklahoma. I want to see that. I want to see it because it was a beautiful knuckleball. DJ and I kind of looking at each other with our eyes wide, wondering where that missed. Where did it go? I mean, full, full count. I, I am I'm struggling to lay off that right there. Here's T.R.A. Jennings. Bases loaded, first pitch a little in, ball one. She has popped out to second twice. I think I'm going to call it right here. Okay. I think it's going yard. She's due. 
the do factor is very high for T.R.A. Jennings. The 1-0. Caught that outside corner, a ball and a strike. So I'm going to be honest with you, and it's just like a former pitcher to talk about the strike zone, but I like the pitch that's getting called a ball, and I know you can't keep throwing it there if you're not getting the call, I get it, but it's a much better location yeah. than that pitch that's getting a called a strike on the other half of the plate. There's a base hit back up the middle into center field. One run scores. Here comes Brito. The throw is not in time. A clutch, two out, two run single has made it 7-1 Sooners off the bat of T.R.A. Jennings, and here comes Jocelyn Ala. Here is what I love about that. You hear me up here saying, oh, it's going to go yard, bases loaded, she's due. But T.R.A. Jennings humbles me, right? She, she keeps it in the moment. She doesn't think big. She thinks effective. Up the middle, keep it on the ground, low liner. First pitch to Alo is a little low and away, ball one. That is the mark of a veteran hitter. And she passes the bat to none other than, than Alo. Alo has been walked twice in pursuit of 96. Here's the 1 0. First swing of the swing. day. She wanted that. She wanted it. <laughs> swing and a miss, strike one. <laughs> Speaking of swinging out of your shoes. <laughs> she wanted that. Ball and a strike. 7-1 now. Sooner is lead it with two on. The 1-1. One, one. Well outside. Two balls and a strike. I would be confused to see Peace go back inside. Yeah. To Alo. I know she got the swing through. I have a feeling we're going to see everything working. Away and low. Yes, yeah. down and out. The 2-1. Ball three. The base hit by Tiare Jennings. Broken 0 for 10 skid for the sophomore. She had been scuffling just a bit, and it was a big one. Will Alo see a pitch? Ahead of the count, three balls and a strike. Here it comes, ball four. Mm. And here comes Jana Johns. I thought Jana Johns hit one out of here the last time she was up. <laughs> I'm still not sure that ball didn't get out of here. <laughs> but she has another opportunity here with the bases loaded. Boone at third. First pitch is up high for a ball. Jennings at second, Allo at first. 7-1 Sooners with a chance to send Marita Hinesfield into a frenzy. The 1-0. Hung up a little high, ball two. Seven walks, by the way, for Autumn Peaks. Well, and something we're starting to see, and Aaron, one of your keys to the game, count management. Yeah. We're seeing it. This, this, it, we've seen a shift. Peace is not in control of this game anymore. We were seeing her hit spots, pull Pops the string. Up, foul behind home plate, just out of the reach. Throwing the off the speed whenever she wanted. Yeah. And now we're seeing that off speed. It's missing up. That pitch that was sawing off these hitters for those, those little lollipop infield pop-outs. They're now getting laid off. They're missing too high in the zone. A little bit of a different outcome when you're not hitting those spots. Two balls and a strike. 7-1 Sooners. Base is loaded. Jana Johns, the ninth batter here in the third. Three runs already in. The pitch hangs up high. Ball three. You know, I wonder, because I, I'm, I'm up here in the booth, I've got a little bit more of a bird's eye view. I can see the knuckle mm -hmm. out of the glove. So the one she threw to Lions, as soon as she came out you of the glove, see I, yep. And this is a team that's known for picking those things. I, yeah. I can only imagine that, that maybe somebody's chirping out of the dugout. There's a strike, three, two. And here's the thing. You take an off speed away from a pitcher. Like this. Like this. Yeah. 
the entire game changes. Yeah. A bundled up, raucous crowd greeting the defending national champs. Ready to explode on this 3-2. Pop foul off the net. You know, and Aaron, speaking of calling the knuckleball out of the grip, out of the glove, I threw a knuckleball. Yeah. One of my best pitches. I would practice in the book, because I wasn't going to let anyone take it away from me. Call it all you want, you still have to hit it, right? <laughs> I, that's just kind of who I was. But I would practice in the bullpen, coming out, knuckled, top of my circle, taking them out and throwing a fastball. Yeah. Wow. Wow. 3-2, check swing, ball four. Oh, they no. say she swung a late call by the third base umpire on a ball in the dirt, inning over. It goes from walking in the eighth run of the game to being the third out of the inning. Oh, tough call goes against the Sooners, but OU adds three. Nickel State and Drake this weekend as the Sooners have made a change in the circle. Nicole May takes over for Jordy Ball here in the top of the fourth inning with Oklahoma on top 7-1. To First, uh, second pitch swinging, base hit in the left field from Megan Dre. And let's talk a little bit more about Nicole May. Uh, Aaron, yeah, we had a chance to see her star in both falls. And of course, last year as a true freshman, pitching in some big moments, including yeah. in the Super Regional, she's off to a fantastic start. I mean, what sticks out in my mind is the Women's College World Series. You know, I got to see her in the fall early in her career, the journey from off-season preparation all the way to the big stage. And I'm telling you, that Women's College World Series made her into a woman. That, that to me, was the transition. But has popped foul just out of the reach of Jana Johns. She got tested. There were some big moments there, and I think that that experience, you just, it's irreplaceable. And now she's got it in her back pocket. She's, she's created a foundation off of it, and I'm excited. I'm excited for her this season. And as she's ahead on the count here, no balls and a strike, DJ Sanchez, we've seen her get more confident in the circle. The 0 1 misses out a ball and a strike, and she's really had a I don't want to say completely different attitude because she's still Nicole May, but she's got a lot of confidence she's pitching with this year. Absolutely, and we didn't see that all the time last year. No. We could see the freshman in her. Yeah. You could see it. And by the time the Women's College World Series rolled around, I think that there was, not because it was lack of confidence in any way, by any means, but there was a little bit of question mark of how is she going to handle the stage? I agree. With that. What yep. is it going to look like? because she has all the tools. She is unbelievably talented, but how is she going to handle being in that type of situation? Bunt pops right to Hanson, but it's foul. Well, Hanson was locked and loaded. She was ready to go. <laughs> ready to throw to first. I agree with that, though. And it's, to me, the Women's College World Series is an anomaly, because yep. it's not just about the competition, okay? It's about the entire thing. What's at stake? 12,000 people in the stands. It's loud. It's hot. It's in the middle. You know, it's early June. The heat index. It's long days. You're there. It, there's a whole lot of variables that go into that. And so I agree with you. I think it was how will she handle this moment? And she handled it with poise. Yes. And we saw in that moment what Nicole, what Nicole May could be and what she is. Yeah. And we've seen that carry over into this season. I'm confident in seeing everything that's gone on. You know she's a leader in that bullpen yeah. with everything that she's done. 3-2 pitch, ball four. And our new pitcher, Nicole May, has struggled. Gave up a leadoff single to Megan Dre, and now Ellie Jensen, the nine-hole hitter, reaches on a walk. Here's the very dangerous Lauren Espelin. She is 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs to short. Going a little different theory with the wristband, putting it in the back pocket as opposed to wearing it on the wrist. I like it. Don't see that very often. Sooners have a 7-1 lead, but this Minnesota team is not going away. Here's the first pitch to Espelin. Misses low, ball one. And something, too, that the Gophers have done all day. It hasn't been the top of this lineup that has been the run production. It hasn't been the top of this lineup that has been getting runners in scoring position. It has been the bottom half yeah. rolling it back over. 
The 1 0. Caught the outside corner, 1 1. This is so uncharacteristic, too, of Sooner pitchers. I mean, we, we were talking about run differential, but Oklahoma as a team has been walked 66 times heading into tonight this season, has only issued 21 walks on the season. The 1 1 misses low. Good job by Hanson to keep it in front of her. Here tonight, Oklahoma has already issued four walks, had a hit by pitch, two wild pitches. Now, granted, um, Pease has done a pretty solid job of staying even with the Sooners with the seven walks, two to three of those intentional passes, but it's kind of uncharacteristic from what we've seen. 2-1, fouled off. Two, what two. feels so odd to me is that, you know, we're, we're up here, constructive criticism, analyzing what we're seeing, it doesn't feel like this is a 7-1 no. ball game. It, it still feels like there's a lot of room for improvement, a lot of things that can be cleaned up. And I would argue to say that if you were to go down and ask Jen Rocha that exact question, she would agree with you. 2-2 two, two, misses up, ball three. And I would even make that, that argument offensively. Minnesota's a good team. They've shown that they had a game plan. They are following that game plan. The game plan has evolved, and they've committed to it. They've had really aggressive at-bats. They've made pitchers labor. Full count. Ground ball back up the middle. Could be two. Lyon steps on the back for one to first. Double play. Grace Lyon smooth. Two outs. Six unassisted. Three for G3. Talk about being in a situation. Again, we've seen this a ton today where the defense has got to step up and have the pitchers back. First and second, one of the best hitters in this gopher lineup and being able to turn the double play, put Nicole May in a position where she can get out of this inning. Jen Hartog is currently fifth in the country in home runs. She has nine so far this season, knotted up with a group that includes Oklahoma's T.R.A. Jennings, Tennessee's Kiki Malloy, who is as advertised, by the way. We saw that firsthand, the 1-0. Swing and a miss, 1-1. One one. Bailey Klingler is in that mix, too. Washington, a little bit more offensive-minded. But nine home runs this year. She is their most dangerous hitter. Counts even at a ball and a strike. Runner at third, two outs, the 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss, pull the string again. I really feel, too, this is one of the first times we've seen Minnesota look like they have their timing distorted a little mm. bit. Their game plan looks a little bit off. They're swinging outside of the zone. Two's a little up, two balls and two strikes. Seven runs on six hits for the Sooners. And seven walks they've received. Three of those to Jocelyn Ala. In pursuit of 96, the 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss! Got a piece of it? No, it's in the dirt. Hanson will throw to first, inning over. What a job by Nicole May to pitch through some early inning adversity and uh, make a pitching change. Emily Levitt will get the call, and Kinsey Hansen leads it off. 7-1 Sooners, bottom of the fourth. First pitch to Hansen is up and in. That ball gets to the backstop for ball one. Good look at Levitt. The righty. Six and three record on the season. Chino, California, by way of Huela High School. This is her 13th appearance on the season. Opponents hitting 298 against her. 1-0 inside, two balls and no strikes to Kinsey Hanson. Had a good question off Twitter at OU on the air. When you were talking about what you saw out of the glove, of peace and you're seeing the knuckle. Is it literally you're just seeing her grip the ball with the knuckle that she's going to throw, right? Yeah, that grip. And also, when she's throwing, Three -dome. I also look, what does the wrist flexion look like? Mm. A lot of times you're going to see pitchers when they're throwing, they're throwing with velo. 
they're coming out of that glove and getting engaged, getting ready to snap the ball off. Part of the part of the way you change speed is is limiting your wrist snap. You're yeah. kind of seeing, even if it's just a hair, with a strike called strike there, but even if it's just a hair, seeing that that tightness of that of that wrist. I also look a lot at, at burying the ball in the glove. Typically with a knuckleball, you're really pushing the meat of that ball into the palm of the hand. 3-1 is ripped into left field, a base hit. Kinsey Hansen's two for three, and has been on base all three times. And I'm with you, Aaron. I am, we have been in that dugout. I am confident that that was picked. Oh, yeah. Pretty, pretty early. Yeah. And you also, too, I think you can see it. She started missing it outside the zone. She might have known it was picked. Absolutely. And that, can, no get, that can get in the head of a pitcher, for yep. sure. Here's Taylor Snow. Base hit her last time up on that little sweet, soft slap and was right past the glove of Autumn Pease. Snow's been on base both times. Fielder's choice in the first inning when Jana Johns was thrown out at home. Singleton scored a run in the third. Lines this one foul. Cow. Seven one Sooners, seven hits. And an incredible number of walks, seven total from Minnesota pitchers. One ball, one strike. With Hanson at first, nobody out. Well, he's got this game sniffing around run rule territory as the 1-1 one, one misses low, 2-1. and one. But as one of our great regular contributors pointed out, when the Sooners get off the bus, a game's in run rule territory with the way this offense has been humming so far this year. Kudos to Seth Oliveris, my guy, for that line. Here's a 2-1, a high ball three. I do feel, and we still have a lot of game left. I know we're in run rule territory, but there's still a lot of game to go. When this game is over, I, I feel like we're, the conversation is going to be had 3-1, a pie ball four. That some of these opportunities, there's another walk, were given, Eight. not taken. And there's a difference of how you put those runs on the board. And well, anybody knows you take runs where you get them. It doesn't matter. But how much of this was self-inflicted by gopher pitching and how much of this was OU hitters having good quality at bats. bats and swinging at good pitches? It's a great question. In fact, uh, Piper Ritter, who has made a career out of getting the most out of her pitching has got to be frustrated because I'm sure she feels the part of that is her pitching, you know, not taking care of. There's been some tough called strikes. Strike zone has fluctuated a bit. But still, you're talking about eight free passes between two pitchers. It's got to be frustrating. That's almost an entire lineup. That's right. <laughs> Here's Grace Lyons. First pitch swinging line to the right center field. That ball will get to the wall. Easily scoring is Hanson. Coach Gasso is sending Kaylin Snow. She'll score without a throw. It's 9-1 to one Sooners. Hello, run rule territory, thanks to Grace Lyons. I love to see Grace Lyons take advantage of the opportunity coming straight off of the visit in the circle swinging first pitch i love it and again that's one of the hardest hit balls i think we've seen all yeah. day I, if there is a, a a distinct bright spot to me about offense for ou right now is the the fact that they haven't had to wait on the long ball we so often see oh they're you know they're just blowing hits blowing balls out of this yard and they they have simplified in that regard which i appreciate is that hey we don't have to hit the ball out we can also score in other ways yeah we're going to take the free passes but also we're going to hit gap to gap here's elam lindsey elam will pinch it here with a runner at second that was the reason for the delay as the Sooner captain takes ball one high. Chickasha product. 
That average is incredibly deceiving on this season. She said over 300, 333 with runners in scoring position. A season average 235, the 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss on a pitch a little up. A couple of extra base hits this season, including a home run, which for Lindsey Elam helped her tally up four RBI as the 1-1 pitch misses inside to him. I mean, it's been hard to crack this lineup. She's, you're talking about a, a regular part of the squad and has only had 17 at bats so far this season. It's tough. 2 1. Popped up. Behind home plate. Is there a play to be made? No. Maybe. Kinch had a shot, but it was up against the netting behind home plate. Well, for Lindsey Elam, too. I don't know if there are many other hitters who are as clutch as Lindsay Elam off the bench as we have seen her be in, in recent memory. But part of that, too, taking advantage of the opportunities when you get them. Yep. Lindsay Elam is very good at that. Full count here. So 2-2 two -two pitch misses high. I'll tell you, she's one of the most competitive people yes. I know. I, I think of off-season training triathlon she's always finishing in the top three of of any off-season training any competition she's she's laying it all out there so yeah you nail it if she gets an opportunity she's gonna go for it three two lifted pretty deep to left field it's got a chance at the warning track it's caught Jensen with her back up against the wall makes the catch right in front of the 2013 national championship mural one away elam did everything but hit that out not a lot of wind here tonight was some earlier but it's died down a bit that was a nice play by jensen got up against the wall had a beat on it the whole way Here's Alyssa Brito. By the way, Elam was hitting in Jada Coleman's spot as the first pitch to Brito misses high for Bowen. So you would assume Jada's going to re-enter and play center, or stay in center field, or maybe Coach Gasso might give some of the youngsters an opportunity, let Elam catch the top half of the fifth inning. 9-1 Sooners. Brito takes the 1-0 pitch for a strike. 0 for 2, but has reached base and scored both times for Alyssa Brito. And has hit the ball hard, Aaron Miller. Hard. This is a huge ins insurance run. I mean, it, it, they know. They know what territory they're in. Minnesota knows. And they know the importance of their next at-bats. So to snag another run would be huge. Huge. 1-1 one, one misses 2-1. and one. Especially where Minnesota is coming up in their lineup. Yeah. I, you know, OU is getting ready to go through the toughest part of their lineup coming up 3-4-5. Huge run on second base. Hard hit ball again, foul down the third baseline. It's so telling, even with the score being what it is, that this, this stadium is full. <laughs> yep. Minnesota came to Oklahoma probably hoping to get a little bit better weather, and it has been the exact opposite ever since they arrived. Yeah. Ever since they, well, we had one couple pretty days. That was it. The 2 2 pitch misses outside, full count. We were in the 70s, yeah. middle of last week, and right. then tanks. You had the, they came, um, they came down on Wednesday of last week, had some sunshine, and then it all fell apart this weekend, <laughs> weather wise. The 3 2. Another hard hit foul ball. Boy, Brito is not cheated on any of these cuts at the plate is she? Wow. She's coming out of her shoes. Had a chance to meet Alyssa's dad in Los Angeles where we were playing the Mark Campbell Invitational. It was a short drive from where she played high school ball. A field where so many of these players played travel ball. Great family. Popped up. Left side. Should be easy for 
Down the, or down the shortstop who makes a catch, and there's two away. Here's Riley Boone's spot, and we'll see Lou. Mackenzie Donahue will get an at-bat with two outs in the fourth. Patty Casso sensing with a 9-1 lead that maybe Nicole May can work a quick fifth. So let's get an at-bat for Lindsey Elam and Lou Donahue. Maybe Grace Green, if Lou can get on base here, who has jumped into the on-deck circle. What a story Mackenzie Donahue has been just in general. Obviously struggling a bit this season, but that one home run it came against Mississippi State on a Saturday night in L.A. She again, another one of those players that has just had some unfortunate luck. She has hit the ball hard. First pitch takes it low for ball one. Well, talk about competitive as well. I mean, I've had the opportunity to to spend a little bit of time with Lou and work work camp with Lou, and she is competitive and just grinds. She takes the 1 0 pitch inside, two balls and no strikes. What I love about her is the flair for dramatics. She's intense. <laughs> She's not afraid to yell, yep. bang a ball off the wall. She, she plays the game with passion. I relate to that because I loved playing the game that way. It's a 2 0. Caught the strike zone, two balls and a you strike. You feed off that stuff. I mean, you witnessed it during the Women's College World Series. I mean, she was electric. She had an entire softball nation that was <laughs> breathing her energy and just loving every moment of it. 2-1 called strike, too. And to have that in the dugout, huge. To be able to call upon her to bring that energy in any moment, huge. Like so many of the Sooners, versatile too, can play many positions. 2-2 two -two pitch here is up high ball three. She's played first. She started for a while at second. Seemed to have now found a spot in the outfield with the Sooners. Has played both left and right field so far this season. Versatility for Lou Donahue. Full count. Here's the pitch. Ground ball back up the middle, cut off by Dow. The throw is in time, inning over. And the Sooners add two more on a big time hit from Grace Lyons. So here is a new look at the Sooners defensively. Looks like they have shifted as the first pitch from Nicole May is a little low for ball one. Looks like Brito is out and right now. Jada Coleman re-enters in center. And Lou Donahue stays in and left. Infield stays the same, and Sophia Nugent in behind the plate. Thank you, Patrick Dunn. One ball, no strikes. The pitch caught the upper edge of the strike zone, one and one. Now the shortstop. Made some nice plays in the field, but is 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. The 1-1. One, one. Hit to left center field. Donahue calls off Jada Coleman and makes the catch, and there's one away. Chance of Lou permeate throughout Marina Hines field. I hope people that haven't heard that before don't think that our fans are booing their <laughs> own player. I think the best part is how the the nickname Lou really came yeah. mm -hmm. to fruition during the World Series. Yeah. Chance of Lou making every play. It's a no-fly zone out there with Lou in left and Coleman in center. Throw Brito in right as the first pitch is a strike. Or Riley Boone, who's played most of this game, and it's hard to get a ball down. Sarah Kinch is 0 for 2. Struck out in the second. Popped out to Kinsey Hansen in the third. She bats here with nobody on. And one out in the fifth. Sooners up nine to one. Ooh, that just missed. Not sure where it missed. <laughs> you can see May asking, trying to figure out where that ball was. I think you said something piqued my interest earlier, DJ. You and DJ Sanchez, Aaron Miller, and Chris Lang, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Been a fun one, a challenging one for both sides so far. Grant Wade, our producer, is the one-one pitch misses inside, but. Some of these pitches that are being called balls are actually spots where you would want your pitchers throwing them. Again, That's got to be tough. And I say that not, not to say 
DJ says throw it where the <laughs> where's not a strike. That's not no. But there have been some really good pitches just like that off speed for the swing through right there. But hit that have been that is where you work. That is the quadrant you work in. You work at the knee. And I feel like a lot of the called strikes we've seen have been more elevated pitches mm. in a place where I'm kind of going, I'd like to see that pitch be a little bit lower. 2-2, two, two, swing and a miss, strike three. Two away. But I do have to say, as we see that strikeout by Nicole May, great off-speed pitch. But one thing that the Sooner pitching staff has done very well today is take care of the top of this lineup one through four has reached base one time yeah. tonight what foul strike one and that's really for the scope for team those are their table setters and a lot of the success and i i don't think that this is the best pitching performance we have seen i know there's only one run on the board four hits statistically it looks really good with that being said i think that there's going to be some adjustments being made after the game yeah um but with all of that, the top part, most potent part of this lineup was held at bay tonight. Yeah. No one swing and a miss, and Nicole May getting better as this game goes on. Out of the count, no balls and two strikes. Sooners one strike away from 16-0 and their 12th run rule win of the season. The 0-2, swing and a miss, win column Sooners game over in its home opener Oklahoma rolls over Minnesota out of the Big Ten by a final score of nine to one they're 16 and 0 on this season 12 of those wins by run rule and they're on their way to Hawaii as Jocelyn Alo's chase for 96 returns to her home town her home state it's going to be electric as it was here tonight we welcome you into the bud light post game show along with aaron miller and dj sanchez i'm chris plank i'm sure happy patty gasso with a nine to one win but you know aaron miller not without some things that you know coach is going to be able to take and and teach and coach and learn from here there's never team. a game that's perfect right. i don't care how big the win is but i think that the big points I'll talk on the offensive side. I think it's managing those counts, swinging at balls, um, you know, that fit your approach. And I, th I did think that this offense got better about that later in the game, but I know pitching DJ is it's the biggest point. I think that's going to be addressed in the locker room. Absolutely. And I'm not, I am never one to make excuses for anybody. Yeah. Right. But with that said, we have to remember that Jordan Ball is a freshman yeah. who just had, there's a lot, there was a ton of anticipation for that, for this entire team, but for a lot of people to see Jordan Ball tonight. Yeah, at home. At home. There was a ton of anticipation. I think that we would be naive to say that she didn't feel that a little yeah. bit. I don't think it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be the last time she is put in a high pressure situation not that you know that this was a huge pressure situation but you can feel it mm -hmm. as a freshman as a pitcher i don't think we saw her best stuff but with that being said she still fought through it yeah. and that is what you want to see she did not quit Let's take a look at the highlights brought to you by blue cross and blue shield of oklahoma Taylor snow got it started for the sooners but minnesota made a nice play to cut down Jana Johns. Minnesota did fight back. Nowhere for Grace Lyons to go. We're knotted up at one and then Riley Boone breaks this game open with a big triple down the line. Jana Johns, I still thought this thing was gone. Hits right off the top of the <laughs> wall. By the way, delete that home run call. To the third, and guess who? Riley Boone with the bases loaded in run, uh, walks in a run, and Tiari Jennings was in an 0 for 10 skid. A two-run single really helped blow this game open for the Sooners. They never looked back, and then in the fourth, Grace Lyons with the final touches. That scorcher all the way to the right center field wall. Oklahoma with its, with its eighth and ninth run, put it out of reach, 9-1, to and here is your play of the game, and who else? Aaron, but Riley Boone. I loved it. I thought that this was so timely. We needed this. She needed this. And I think that that 
That triple down the line was the momentum that that OU dugout was looking for. OG&E, play of the game, OG&E. We energize live our player of the game. Though, how about Grace Lyons? Smooth in the field, and DJ, when they needed her most, she came up with a big hit. She came up huge defensively, but that double late in the game, mm. big time, sealing the deal, deal for the Sooners. Today, uh, Jimmy Austin, OU Golf Club, where we encourage you to golf like a champion, our player of the game, sponsor, Grace Lyons.